Hey guys, welcome back to the Hirsi channel. Ta here is here. I hope you had a fantastic week. Well, I promised to talk a little bit about our Black Mamba, but I'm gonna hold off from that topic until a few weeks from now because there is a very high probability I'll actually be in that part of California. So I might try to make sure I make my tribute video on the location. Just works out in terms of the timing. And instead, today we're talking about another outstanding personality in this culture. I think it's very important for us to highlight the life of an immigrant who moved here to the United States at a young age and he really redefined the way you would perceive a life of a college dropout. You would think minimum wage jobs, flipping burgers somewhere, barely any social life, four or six people living in a two-bedroom apartment. Well, no, we're talking about millions of dollars in a bank account, a house in LA with a view and a bunch of friends who you get to hang out with, do a lot of fun stuff on video and post it on YouTube. I'm talking about David Dobrik. I think there are a lot of things we can find entertaining about David Dobrik, but there are very few important items that a lot of people miss when it comes to learning things from his style, from his dedication and hard work that we can apply to our life. Let's do this. This is so sick. Yeah, it is sick. I'm gonna get girls now. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, the unfortunate part about covering sometimes this kind of topics is that major media outlets, they love to focus on the amount of money that the person is making and the fact that he's barely 25 and the fact that he just does all sorts of random crazy things out there and giving cars to everyone. But I think those are the least interesting parts about his life. And when I talk about things that I personally learned from this guy, I really focus on what stood behind his skyrocketing success and the way he created his own style, his own way of telling the story, and his even own visual identity when it comes to each video that he produced. I really think that he took it to a whole nother level and that's what contributed to his popularity. All you really need to know for the purpose of this video is the fact that David Dobrik is an immigrant who came from Slovakia with his family. He's part of DACA program, which is interesting because it essentially puts him in this vulnerable state under the current administration and he cannot even travel outside of the country. At first, he gained his popularity on Vine. Yeah. Remember that app? And when that platform was shutting down, David made that transition, which I don't think was easy in the first place because you're moving from the six second videos over to the long former content on YouTube. And well, that was one heck of a successful transition. This is so sick. Yeah, it is sick. I'm gonna get girls now. <laughs> <laughs> I think there are three major themes that we can learn from David Dobrik, and the first one is highlights only. I've said it before, making YouTube videos is hard. Making this kind of weekly video is hard enough, but making three videos a week and cutting it down from all the content that you've created to the four minutes, 20 seconds of highlights that's tough. That's a lot of what seemingly is great content. That's potentially hours of footage that was never used because it did not make that bar, that high standard that David set for himself. That requires a lot of discipline. That requires discipline of making sure you only keep the, your top content and it requires the discipline to remain consistent throughout the years. I've looked back to a few years on David Dobrik's channel and he retained that formula for a while. We all can learn from it, whether it's verbal, written communication, whether it's some sort of art form that we're trying to express ourselves. I'm not perfect. I'm still learning. I'm still trying to master it both in my business and my personal and in this creative field. It requires a lot of discipline. It requires a lot of thought behind each message that you're trying to convey. When you're trying to convey a message, find the right golden line, stick to it and cut any slack off of it. You must keep only the meat on the bones and no fat. Even me describing it, that was already, I think, too much, but that proves my point that retaining that mastery of clear communication through the minimum amount of content requires a lot of practice and a lot of hard work. And this is the first thing that I think we can all learn from David's experience. This is so sick. Yeah, it is sick. I'm gonna get girls now. <laughs> <laughs> The second theme of David's success is his team or his friends, friends and a team. Sometimes it's really hard to tell them apart because it's one and the other meshed together. And I'm not even gonna try to name all the people who were there. And to be completely frank, we don't even have to worry about the people, but more about the dynamic between all of them. I've seen others say before I even start watching David's content that the vlog squad are just a bunch of people who are leeching off of his popularity and trying to be the free riders who are getting free views from it. 
to those people have you really watched david's content he shows up in maybe 20 percent of his videos or 20 percent of his footage contains his face or his voiceover primarily it's his friends it's the vlog squad it's other people talking to the camera discussing something with him or just acting crazy and stupid all over the united states i mean it in the nicest and most respectful way they do belong to each other the dynamic that continuous contribution to the content the way they complement each other is just something that stands out to me and can be the example for all of us I can imagine how David on his own can cater to a certain type of audience, but all almost 16 million subscribers on his primary channel, the way he got them is by having multiple people covering different kind of topics, setting up different kind of themes and jokes and the play through in between all of those characters creates what is the David Dobrik experience that we watch in those four minutes and 20 seconds. It's the compilation of different things that are happening within a single day or a week that cater to multiple tastes, thanks to the fact that there's a vlog squad there. Communication failure. One of my favorite examples of that dynamic is Jason Nash. I, quite frankly, really like the guy, but the great example that he says is being the person who is almost twice the age of the rest of the group, he's seen not only what the comedy world looks like, but also what the failure looks like. And his presence there does not only contribute his experience in creating the jokes and the comedic bits, but it also contributes to the rest of the group's experience because he can show them and he can tell them the stories of what the failure looks like, what it looks like to be on the other side of success, which hopefully encourages them to work even harder to maintain that top position. For us, this is a great example of why we should keep the diverse group of people around us. Never hire or work with people who are exactly like you, you will benefit the most when you combine a diverse group of personalities, diverse ethical, cultural, business, professional backgrounds who are all contributing to the same project. This is how you create successful projects, by making sure you take into account multiple different views, multiple different personalities, and the diversity of the experience. This is so sick. Yeah, it is sick. I'm gonna get girls now. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, the second theme is giving back. Yes, if there's one thing David is famous for is that he buys people cars and almost every other month has this one of those videos with the thumbnails that's surprising someone with a car. But no, it goes well beyond that. I'm pretty sure David understands the value that Vlog Squad and all the friends around him bring to his life and to the content that he creates and he makes sure he shares his success whether it's sharing through contributing to their projects highlighting their projects leaving links to their channels yes buying them expensive stuff but primarily being there for them whether it's for the personal or professional reasons his crew is a rotating cast of characters yes some people left some people recently joined and some people will probably soon leave and some people will soon join yet what i notice is that throughout those years david remained in his approach and he remained honest and frank about his willingness to contribute back and give back the spotlight that he gains thanks to the crew around him and yes no matter how many times he shoots them with a paintball gun throws them in the back of the truck with a swimming pool or just asks them to do random things for the video at the end of the day he says thank you in his own David Dobrik way this is so sick yeah it is sick I'm gonna get girls now <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard about David Dobrik before? What do you think of this Slovak stud? And have you ever think that a 24 year old can teach you about life, team, and the way of giving back? Well, share your thoughts, ideas, or maybe examples of other people like him in the section below. And this is all that I have for you guys this week. Yes, researching for this video was a lot of fun. I probably watched a few dozen of David Dobrik's videos and I regret nothing. I hope like me, you've learned a few things from David Dobrik and from this video. Yes, his vlogs can be obnoxious, can be rude, can be immature. Yeah, definitely immature. But at the end of the day, I think there's a reason why David Dobrik is so successful. Thank you very much guys for stopping by. If you're new to this channel, go ahead, hit the subscribe button and check out the videos in the backlog. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you very much for stopping by. As always, let me know in the comment section below what you thought about this video. And I will see you all next Saturday, 10 a.m. Eastern on this very channel. And because I'm recording like maybe 40 minutes before the beginning of the Super Bowl for the American crowd over here, it's a big game. Well, I have to say that my bet was on Kansas City Chiefs 
primarily on Patrick Mahomes from the very beginning of the playoffs. I'm excited to see them in the and at the final game. And I hope they win. We'll see. By the time this video is out, we will know whether I was right or wrong. At this point, it's 50% chance, but I'm excited to go and watch a game. Excited to be back in the swing of things. And as I said, excited to have, as always, the few more things churning through the pipeline. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.